So hi there, this is Pamela Gail Johnson with Happier at Work, and thank you for joining our, um, our webinars. We try to do, we're gonna start doing these Care Greatly webinars about helping your teams flourish probably a couple times a month. So we'll do them randomly and at random times so we can kind of meet the, the time of all the, all the time zones of everyone. Um, but if you're on the list for these webinars, you will always get the uh, link to the to the video recording. So that way you can always watch them or just read the recap or, or whatever is important. So anyway, thank you and welcome for being here. Again, my name is Pamela Gail Johnson. I'm with Happier at Work. Um, so today I thought we would start out by just talking a little bit about leadership and happiness. Um, leadership is just like a broad term word. And so I think when we think about leadership, sometimes we think about, you know, kind of managing tasks of people, but good leaders know that's not, not necessarily the case. Um, a team is a lot like a family, and so you've got a lot of different people on it, and you're trying to meet a lot of different uh, styles of how do you keep people doing what you need them to do so that your big picture goals are addressed, um, which some would call that motivation. So how do we keep people motivated? I remember I was having probably one of my last sales managers and he was we were going to appointments we were out of town so we had a series of appointments we we're actually in El Paso Texas and he was telling me that he didn't perceive it as his job to have to motivate people he thought people should be self-motivated now I initially wanted to jump in and say well that's not exactly the case I think a manager's job is to you know is to motivate but he and I would get into some really, um, honestly, great conversations about management and leadership and, and things like that. So I wanted to ponder what he said before I, I just immediately jumped in with a response. So I pondered it, and actually I pondered it for a few days because I kind of kept thinking, wow, maybe he's really not the great leader I thought he was. But it did finally dawn on me that to some degree, it isn't necessarily his job to motivate me, but it's certainly his job to not demotivate me which he would occasionally do on some of our team sales calls. Now we were a virtual team, so you have people in different cities and states, so these would usually be done via the phone and he traveled to ride with his different reps. So as we have more virtual offices, sometimes it's a little hard to know if maybe you've demotivated somebody because of the, you know, you don't get the interaction of the looks on the face or the blank stares or the deer in the headlights. But I think as leaders, and if we're looking to create a happier at work culture and a happy, or happier at work team, one of the things we have to look at is what is it that you may or may not intentionally or unintentionally be doing that might or might not motivate uh, or that might actually demotivate your team? Because when we're demotivating our team, what happens after that team meeting or that team interaction? People leave and then they start, you know, whispering or picking up the phone and calling each other or texting each other or and depending on your company size, you may be IMing your teammates, you know, asking what do they mean by blah, blah, blah. They may not be comfortable asking you or may not want to ask it in front of other teammates. But I think you have to remember the very first contact you have with your team in the morning, whether it's a team call, it's an individual hello, it's an email, it's a text, you know, however you start your, your team's day, that is going to set the pace for the whole day. So if your first email or text to somebody is, you know, a laundry list of what did you do, you may have a team that's, that's somewhat might, might find that, you know, de demotivating. Um, if there's something going on in the company that's not being discussed and you can't necessarily discuss details, it's still nice to address it. Like, I know we're um, possibly considering merging with XYZ because we've all read that in the newspaper. We still don't know what's going on with that. And the most important thing we need to be doing right now is to make sure we're doing our jobs and we all have really great resumes. So in case we, in case the worst happens, our team is dismantled or we get dispersed into other um, groups within an organization um, or the, the other company is acquiring us as, an, a, a, as, as their, you know, resources or intellectual capital. We want to make sure that we're, we look like we're great team members, that we weren't just sitting here, you know, not working. So you get, there's things you can do that still address the root of the issue, even if you can't necessarily go into details, even if you do know more things. Um, I think if you have something going on in your personal life and, and people know about it, maybe you have an, an ill parent or an ill child, and if it's, again, something that the majority of the team knows about, make sure you just occasionally just let people know what's going on. Because, again, what's going to happen if you don't? 
people walk out and they're doing the little chit chat about you know whatever they want to know so there's things again that you do and maybe unintentionally that can cause a little bit of demotivation within your team or have people you know questioning what's going on because it, and it all gets into that how do you start the day so if you can clear up any question marks any anything you know try to do that sometimes maybe start your day with like a positive team quote or just a story about even your career with this company or a different organization so again you set the pace with your first contact try to make it be something similar to the contact you would like your manager to have with you whether they do or not because they may not be a happier at work leader um, I think the second thing every single manager struggles with is is favoritism and I recently read a post about leadership and um, Vince Lombardi had this just fabulous quote and it was sort of talking about leading with love and I, I don't know if in today's environment you know we are walking into our, com our corporate offices or, or government organizations or you know nonprofit organizations and, and say hey guess what I'm leading with love but this was um, the quote that they said so I wrote it down because it's long he said I don't necessarily have to like my players and associates but as their leader I must love them love is loyalty love is teamwork love respects the dignity of all individuals that is the strength of an organization and what I loved about that quote and love by the way is one of our, our 31 types of happiness um, but what I loved about that quote is that it's really true it, you're gonna bond more with certain people on your team they may even be a, a friend outside of work but it's really really important that you keep those boundaries you know in place and you're not showing favoritism because I think favoritism is probably the number one way that leaders end up demotivating a team. Um, it's the number one way you end a call and the rest of the team is talking about, you know, how somebody got slack that everybody else didn't get or somebody got um, acknowledged for something that they did or maybe didn't do or just numerous things that happens with people who are our favorites. Um, we hope our favorites are the people who aren't just people we like personally, but the people who actually are the pr producers of the team. But and everybody can be guilty of showing favoritism to some degree and you can't treat everybody exactly equal because certain privileges are earned but you also don't have to advertise them <laughs> you don't have to advertise that somebody's getting to leave work early because they do meet you know they get all their job done and they're getting to leave work early because maybe they have some something going on that week that they need to do it doesn't necessarily have to be announced some people may or may not know again a lot of people work in virtual offices so people might not know at all um i think it's just again there's this piece of favoritism and it doesn't even necessarily have to be in in the rules you might have a rule where no one ever leaves early including your favorites but if in the meeting you just keep applauding what they do over and over and over again eventually people don't hear it um they because they think that you only see the good they do and you don't see the good other people do so i think favoritism is this other big demotivator so i just kind of challenge you to watch how you might be um, showing favoritism to some people on your team and, and kind of encourage you to take vince's approach of you know i don't necessarily have to like everybody but i do need to love them if i'm going to lead them because ultimately that's good for the organization and then um in the same article i was reading about um boundaries I think you can't lead you know you can't start your days well you can't lead effectively if you're spent you know if you have no energy if you're not feeling positive so you know in the morning when you're maybe driving to work or before you start your day try to block and tackle as I call it that 10 minutes to listen to something positive maybe it's a positive song that kind of energizes you before you start talking to everybody maybe it's reading a self-help book maybe it's just meditating and being quiet sometimes quiet gets undervalued as a recharger um, try to make sure you give yourself just a little teeny window between the chaos of probably getting your significant other your husband your wife out the door dealing with kids getting them off to school getting yourself ready uh, whatever it is that creates the chaos in your morning maybe you're not a morning person you know make sure you just give yourself if you can that five ten minutes doesn't take a long time so you're recharged so you can start that day 
um, and start your interaction with your team in a really uplifted um, way. And then I think throughout your day, you sometimes maybe as a leader, we sort of want to be there for everybody, but maybe you, you have to set some boundaries and have some, you know, open times and when your, your door is just openly available, say between 11 and 12. I don't schedule other meetings and it's a great time to call me, but between 10 and 11 is when I'm doing the report I have to do for my boss. And, and, and again, if your team knows that, they probably can usually work around that. Of course, if you have the quote 911 customer emergency, you can be available, but you try to set those boundaries. One of the um, quotes I read, again, same article was from Warren Buffett, and he said, the difference between successful people and really successful people is that really successful people say no to almost everything. And if you actually think about it, sometimes we think that when somebody comes and asks us to do, be on the extra committee, do extra things at, at work, it's developing our leadership skills and it's going to help us get the next promotion or, or maybe not. But and occasionally that might be true, it depends on your work culture. But most of the time, your boss wants to make sure you are meeting and exceeding your goals, whatever those goals are. And sometimes when we add these extra tasks, it just spreads us too thin and we may not be able to lead the team as effectively as we would like to. So make sure anytime you're taking on anything extra that you have a passion for it, you have an interest for it, it, it somehow isn't actually a great stepping stone to where you need to go. And that can include networking in your organization, but make sure it's connected to something that's actually beneficial to you beyond just kind of doing your boss a favor. There's an occasional time that that may be a good thing, but sometimes again, having those boundaries, even with our teammates and with our bosses, is actually going to be a key to our success and be a key to creating a, a happier at work um, culture. So having said that, I think we're getting super close to our 15 minutes. I try to keep these, it's just somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes so that we're not taking up too much of your time. I do want to remind everybody that next Wednesday is admin day. So that's a great time to kind of rally your team for a, a, a team um, a team activity if you have somebody that does support your team um, from an admin perspective or supports your particular role, even if it's a virtual person. Please make sure you remember them because happy admins help create happier at work teams. Um, we'll be posting the video, so I'd love to um, get your comments and feedback if you email me. If there's topics you'd like for us to cover, I'd love to hear those as well. And having said that, we will. Um, we're, we're going to sign off for now, and I hope you're having a happy day, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye.